Teachers We've all had our favorites and we've had some that we hated to be around. Many studies have shown that due to the sheer amount of time students spend around teachers, they can be one of the most influential figures in a child's life. But what happens when good teachers go bad? Or when bad teachers are given responsibility over a classroom of young, impressionable minds? These real-life incidents just might shock you. Surprise Field Trip High school chemistry teacher Travis Lashine was quite popular amongst the students of Hanover Central High School in Cedar Lake, Indiana. That's probably because he would often invite many of the students over for after-school study lessons at his home. And by study lessons, we mean he would give the kids alcohol and smoke hookah with them. One day, though, he found out that it was the birthday of one of the students hanging out at his house, so he piled all the students into his van and took off for a nearby club. But as many of you may have guessed from the other activities he engaged in with the students, this was not a normal club. Now, let's just say it was a club that was supposed to be for adults only. After a few hours of this very enlightening field trip, Lashaim was driving the boys back home when he got pulled over for speeding. Suspicious as to why the 31-year-old man was driving around at night with a car full of young boys, the police questioned the students and discovered where he had taken them. Lachine was promptly fired from the school, though he would have likely been fired soon anyway as rumors about what Lachine invited students over to his house to do had reached the principal, who was already cooperating with law enforcement to investigate Lachine. In the end, Lachine lost his job and was charged with three counts of contributing to the delinquency of a minor, a Class A misdemeanor that earned him a year of jail time. It pays to be the principal. Over in Harry Potter land, we mean the UK, Joe Shudder was a head teacher or principal who had won an award for her great leadership skills and the performance of her students. While she was running a tight ship at the school though, she was also secretly funneling much of the school's budget toward her own expenses. Shudder would routinely misappropriate money and then secretly use it for such things as £7,000 spent on her birthday party, £10,000 on travel, and a whopping £3,000 on flowers. Shortly after her money mismanagement came to light, she got a double whammy as she was accused of cronyism, giving school jobs to her family and friends over other well-qualified individuals. Authorities may have been slow to suspect that Shudder was such a crook though, given that the BBC had asked to film a documentary about her, given her brilliant and inspirational leadership. The only problem with that is the documentary was directed by her own sister. In the end, Shudder didn't face any legal repercussions but was banned for life from teaching. Sometimes the past comes back to haunt you. Melissa Petro was a regular, unassuming elementary art school teacher, well liked by staff and her students. For three years she taught various art classes to children without incident, and despite her new life she was hiding a very dark secret. The secret would only come to light when Miss Petro admitted it publicly on her own volition, probably not a great move. It all began when Craigslist decided to take down its adult services section, a part of its site which was well known for being used by people to offer certain adult services. It turns out that Miss Petro had worked as a professional companion for a brief time, a fact she admitted to in an opinion piece she wrote for the Huffington Post. Describing herself as being in difficult financial times, she engaged in this work for several months though soon quit, finding it to be physically demanding, emotionally taxing, and spiritually bankrupting. As soon as her school found out about her past, they promptly fired her. Humiliating Special Needs Students No doubt teaching is a difficult job, but even when you're dealing with the stress of handling a room full of teenagers, you should still have the composure to deal with the behavioral needs of a special needs student. Amanda Terrell had one such kid in her class, a 15-year-old boy with Asperger's syndrome, who would sometimes act out. Rather than try to handle the situation delicately, Terrell grew tired of his behavior and built a bad kid fort out of cardboard boxes to place around the student's desk. Enraged over the humiliation of their son, the child's parents took issue with the school. Terrell was suspended over the incident but was then rehired for the next school year. The school board defended its decision saying that Terrell was still a good teacher who had simply made a mistake. Breaking Bad Breaking Bad is a revolutionary TV show made possible by two unique realities of America. Teachers get paid next to nothing, and healthcare is so expensive that you literally have to run a drug cartel to stay on top of your bills. Seriously, the show couldn't have taken place anywhere else in the world, except it sort of did, although not for the same reasons that Walter White started peddling meth. Across the pond in the UK once more, we find an IT teacher named Mohammed Sarwar. 
Liked by his community for his charitable work and always a good example for his young students, Sarwar unknowingly led a secret double life. After clocking out of school, Sarwar would clock into his real job, which was the running of a criminal network. While he may have had the neighbors fooled, he didn't have the British police fooled, who had bugged his car and had been tailing him for weeks. Eventually, they recorded Sarwar talking about cocaine with one of his students and then was followed as he took the student to a drug deal in a local retail park. The police made their move and Sarwar was in custody shortly thereafter, confessing to ferrying kilos upon kilos of cocaine around Britain. Sarwar earned 21 years in prison with no leniency for his role as an educator. A drink to unwind. Maria Elkaya had a very stressful job as an elementary school teacher. Watching over a bunch of young children is no doubt enough to wear the nerves of even the most level-headed teacher, and certainly nobody would have ever faulted a teacher for having a drink to unwind after a long, hard day. Kaya, however, apparently needed to unwind way, way before her workday was over. While chaperoning a field trip to a bowling alley, Kaya decided to have a couple of drinks. Unprofessional, but, well, it's a bowling alley and drinking is sort of expected in these places. What was a couple of drinks, though, turned into a couple more drinks, until eventually the other teachers chaperoning the kids had to call Kaya's husband to come pick her up. Violently ill, Kaya was taken to the hospital instead, where she was found to have a blood alcohol level as high as 0.27, over three times higher than the legal limit of 0.08. While there were eight other teachers present on the field trip and the kids were never in any serious danger, Kaya clearly showed a lack of responsibility and professionalism both with her decision to pour back a few dozen cold ones while still on duty. Fight the power. Ryan Plune was a passionate environmentalist, and honestly, we can't blame him. Our parents used to make fun of hippies who wanted to save the planet, and thanks to them making fun of hippies, we're now running headlong into an irreversible global warming. Thanks, Mom and Dad. With the health of the planet very much at stake, and along with it the prosperity of our own civilization, Plune decided that he wanted to set a good example for his students. While he was a qualified teacher, Plune was instead working as a bus driver for a local high school. On the way back from a field trip, Plune decided on an educational detour, and instead drove the kids to a local protest outside of the Salt Lake City Courthouse. Environmental protesters had gathered there, and according to Plune, he wanted to make the kids aware of the cause. He even thought that the school would be pleased with his actions. But it turns out that basically abducting a busload of children without telling anyone isn't exactly high on the list of things a school wants their bus drivers to do. Bloon was fired, but faced no criminal charges. Mocking Students Chicago is world famous for being a rather tough town. With a very high rate of gun and gang-related violence, it's no surprise that the city can make some people pretty hard inside. Yet, we would at least expect our elementary school teachers to show some compassion toward their kids, and certainly not to mock them mercilessly on social media. On School Picture Day, one of an elementary teacher's students showed up with Jolly Ranchers woven into her hair. The teacher immediately took a photo of the student's unusual but decorative hairstyle and sent it to her husband, then posted it on Facebook. Soon the picture was the laughing stock of the online community, despite all it ever being was a little girl's excited impromptu hairdo. Upon learning of the humiliation, the little girl's parents sued the school while the teacher was put under investigation. Sure, the hairdo may have been out of the ordinary, but tell us that you never did something silly when you were 7 years old. School and alcohol don't mix. Teaching might be a more stressful job than we're aware of, because in Toro Canyon Middle School, Californian teacher Tanya Neff was found intoxicated while teaching or we guess trying to teach anyway. Police were called when Neff showed signs of intoxication, and when they arrived, she was being treated by the school nurse. It turns out that Neff had mixed prescription drugs with alcohol, and likely didn't mean to get so intoxicated, underestimating the interaction between the medicine and the alcohol. Neff was taken to a local hospital for treatment and then was booked into jail to face felony charges for child endangerment. Too much school spirit. For this next story, we go north to America's top hat, Canada. Back in 2010, a Canadian high school decided that it would hold a dance competition for its teachers to show off their best school spirit at a pep rally. The event turned out to be wildly popular, though not for reasons the school hoped for. One of the teachers ended up performing a lap dance along with a male teacher, gyrating their hips to the beat and dancing provocatively. The incident was recorded on two different phones and the footage soon went viral. The teacher was fired and ended up losing her apartment, forced to live out of her car. She was relentlessly slut-shamed for the inappropriate stunt, 
and said later in an interview that she had contemplated suicide. Today though, she's left Canada and works occasionally as a substitute teacher, though she uses her husband's last name on any job applications. Meanwhile, the male teacher involved in the scandal by virtue of being male is largely forgotten and didn't have to suffer years of humiliation. There's a certain amount of trust that goes into the teacher-student relationship, and while many students complain of mean or strict teachers, few can probably claim that their teachers were as terrible or perhaps as naive as the ones on this list. What about you though? Have you ever had any crazy teachers? What stories can you share? Let us know in the comments. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more great content.